This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, March 28th, 2012. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In the Finis Monitor today, we'll talk to Giles Smith. The Arizona Junior just got second in the 100 fly and was also on the winning 200 medley relay at the NCAA Championships. And Giles joins us right now in the Finis Monitor from Tucson. Giles, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing today, Peter? Good, thanks. All right, scale of 1 to 10, how happy were you with your first year at Arizona? Eight. A solid eight. I didn't get everything, but it was a, a real successful season, and I got to bond with the best teammates in the world. You got second in the 100 fly. Fantastic swim. You know, and there's no shame getting second to Tom Shields right now, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, he's spectacular underwater. He's probably the best underwater swimmer I've ever seen, I mean, in the history of swimming. He is an animal. I mean, he is unique. Well, we saw that because we know that you're good underwater. I mean, like, really good underwater. But, uh, but he kind of got you on that 400 medley. Yeah, that was the first time I can really remember someone just literally annihilating me on a last turn of anything. I mean, it was unique. It was a, a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and he swam some of his life. I think he was a 43-500 fly. I mean, I saw a lot of freestyle splits that weren't on that level. <laughs> yeah, 43-5. You can't take that personally. I mean, you had a heck of a meet yourself. Uh, you. So you wound up in Arizona after a pretty tumultuous time in Tennessee. Yes. Kind of looking back on you know, where you started your college career and now where you are, I mean, it must seem like night and day. Yeah, it, it is much different. Um, the coaching staff here at Arizona, um, led by Eric Hansen and Rick DeMont, uh, Tracy and Gio is really – a great group of coaches and they really care about us as individuals and as people not only just in the pool and it's it's a lot different than Tennessee um, I have some good friends and great teammates there but things just didn't work out for various reasons but it sometimes change is good tell me about your mindset when you decide that you just you're not going to continue at Tennessee I mean did you know right away that okay I just need to find another school or did you ever contemplate getting out of the sport? Um, it was a really hard time. It happened around my first NCAAs, uh, my freshman year, around March. I really had probably one of the worst taper meets of my life. I had been a swimmer that always dropped time every single year in my progression. That was the first time I really did not improve at all. And I had to do some real good soul searching and I wasn't enjoying swimming anymore and I was pretty close. If I was ever going to quit swimming at one point in my life, it would have been then. But um, So I decided to transfer. That was a pretty hard process. I really decided between Texas and Arizona. And I, there's no looking back. I had to sit out for a whole year and I had to train with my club team just so I didn't lose any eligibility. And that was hard. That, all the credit for that goes to um, Scott Ward, my club coach, for dealing with me on a really low and disappointing year. I mean, I was not myself that whole year, and he really did a great job of keeping my spirits up. Well, as you mentioned, you have uh, your back swimming best times and swimming great, but it's always a learning process. You know, yes. if there's one thing that the coaches tell you that you still need to improve on, technique or whatever it may be, what do they say? Um, my turn speed for being a little guy is not very good. I really need to improve that in butterfly and freestyle. I need to improve my final underwaters in each, each race I do. My last turn in my 100 fly is good, but in order to be very successful in short course yard swimming, you need to be pretty much unstoppable in the last wall of a 100 fly, 100 free, or whatever it is, because the arts pool is so dominated by guys with great underwaters. Well, you're not alone with that, and again, that's probably the area where – Tom Shields uh, separates himself the most. It's really that last 25. So I, I'm curious, is that something that you know, just takes intense training where you just have to practice 100 and make that last 25, st make yourself stay under longer than you would normally? Yeah, I think it de definitely takes intense training. I'm sure what they do over there in Berkeley is really working because – uh, not even just Tom. I saw some really good underwaters, but guys like freshmen like Will Hamilton. I mean, those guys were, were swimming their hearts out, and that's not just talent that they were swimming with. They were swimming with heart, and they were swimming with 
I think they did a lot of hard training this whole year, and a lot of people really underestimated them and their pursuit for this national title. Because I truly believe, after that meet, that they believe they could win since day one. You've become a great college swimmer, uh, but every swimmer's core dream is to be an Olympian. And, you, you know, you're great underwater. Your stroke does not necessarily lend itself to a long course guy. Are you okay with that if, if you're never an Olympian, but you just end up being a great college swimmer? Absolutely not. Um... I would love to be an Olympian. It's going to be it's going to take every ounce of determination and heart and just improving. But um I honestly feel that I'm a little bit better of a long course racer. I I plan my racing a little better. The yards hundred fly, um I'm not as patient and that kind of showed especially in that 400 medley relay. Um I took it out way too fast. I was on 20.4 at the 50. I mean, that's way too fast for 100. In the long course race, I feel a lot more patient and I can relax and just take my time. So when you say you set up your race better, if there's other butterflies, maybe young kids watching this, what do you mean by that? Um, just really using the momentum from your start. I think that's one of the best things I have in my swimming is my start. and I get really good momentum from it. So I can afford to use that momentum and not use as much energy on the first 50, um, especially in long course, and really – save everything I have for the last 50 because if you're going to make the Olympic team just about anyone in that A final at trials will be able to take it out in 23 it's going to be the guy that can come home as close to 27-0 that's going to be probably going to London I think by most accounts it was uh, Arizona expected to do a little bit better at the NCAA championships as a team yes what was uh, what was kind of the team atmosphere on you know after night three when you guys are all going out to dinner together um it wasn't demoralizing or anything i think we had a really rough day one we didn't execute as a team as well as we could have but we came back we fought day two and day three and after that dinner i mean our seniors they talked and they're bringing a lot of us to tears because i mean we love those guys more than anything and we really even though we didn't get the end result we wanted we know that we still have a lot of young swimmers on this team, and we'll be back. All, all of us will improve for next year, and I mean it. Every single one of us will be better. Well, Giles, you're a good kid and very articulate, and I know you want to go into sports broadcasting perhaps someday. Yes, um, I'm a journalism major at the U of A, and even though I'm a junior academically-wise, I am my eligibility-wise, a lot of people don't know this, I was a sophomore this year, so I have two more years left to compete in the NCAA. Oh, a lot really? Of don't know that. Oh, well, wow, lucky Arizona. <laughs> yeah, we kept it in the psych sheet and everything that I was a junior just because I'm, I'm really ahead of my class in terms of um, the credits that I've taken. I'm around like 80 hours or so, so I'm academically-wise a junior, and I might graduate um, during my fifth year here, which would be my last year competing. So uh, I have two years left. So I think you just kept it in the psych sheet just to play with everybody's heads. <laughs> no way. Um, we just didn't fix that as a team, but it'll, it'll be fine. I'm really excited to have two more years left to be an Arizona Wildcat and represent this program with honor. Well, Giles, thanks a lot. And uh, in a couple of years when you graduate, you know, maybe you could uh, start – Start your career here at Swimming World TV. It'd be nice I to have love you. That. I would really love that, Peter. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful day. You too, Giles. Have a good summer. Thank you. All right, that's Giles Smith joining us from Arizona, and that is it for today's show. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.